What's up mga cup and welcome to our cup unity live streaming kasama si Miss Mel of Ajok International. So we are currently simultaneously mga cup live streaming sa ating When in Halifax and Ajok International and YouTube channel and Canada Filipino community. Ayan. So pang malakasan to because we have Four platforms, sabay-sabay, nagi -sabay, street para po ma-reach out lahat natin mga cup. Comment it below. Ayan, please comment below your locations, where you're watching. And of course, comment also your questions. If you have questions, feel free to ask questions sa ating hashtag. Residence Immigration Consultant, Miss Mel of Ajok International. Ayan. So everyone that are watching, a big shout out to everyone. And of course, we would like to invite you to join our live streaming Ask Question. Because tanong mo, sagot namin. Ayan. Before we start mga kap, I would like also to invite you to join our uh, community, uh, Pinoy Canada Immigration Forum. Ayan. So if you're looking for a support group, feel free to join our support group at Pinoy Canada Immigration Forum. If you are a caregiver, we have a very specific group for you. It's Caregiver Cup Unity. Ayan. So ayan, join kayo. AIPP, we have group for AIPP, student, OFW, uh, AIPP, caregiver, student, uh, ano pa? OFW, Cup Unity. So join those groups. Um, just search it on on Facebook. Cup Unity. Makikita mo ang apat na Cup Unity or Facebook group. And another thing is we have also we have also Kapihan sa when in Halifax. So ano po yun? It's a virtual Kapihan. So kailangan nyo magdala because sabi nga no entry. Ah, no coffee, no entry. So if you want to join our Kapihan sa so when in Halifax, pag-uusapan natin this coming Thursday na with Nico Hoson as, as our special guest. Pag-uusapan natin ang provincial nominee. At paano pumunta dito uh, sa Canada as a registered nurse? Paano ba mag-register? Paano ba magtrabaho at kumuha ng lisensya dito sa Nova Scotia as a register as a nurse? Ayun. Paano ba? Kailangan ba ng lisensya? Para makapagtrabaho, kailangan ba mag-aral? So those are the discussion na pag-uusapan natin. So if you want to join the conversation, join the webinar, just click the link, go to the Facebook page of When in Halifax, look for the kapihan sa When in Halifax, third cup, third cup na siya, tatlong, pangatlong tasa. So join us, it's a very interesting topic because pag-uusapan natin, NS, uh, NSPNP or Nova Scotia Provincial Nominee, pag-process ng license dito sa Nova Scotia para maging nurse. And of course, maraming salamat, Nico, for giving us the time to share your timeline, experience, journey, advantage, disadvantage. So if you have lots of questions about it, join our webinar. And of course, mga kap, before we call our special guest for tonight, before natin tawagin si Miss Mel, maraming salamat for supporting us. And don't forget to do a watch party on our live streaming. So if you're watching on When in Halifax, Ajok, uh, Canada Filipino Community, comment it below. Ayan. Sabi ni Hubert, Good morning, Cap Joey! <laughs> Katropa ka 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 si Hubert eh. Ayan. Huwag natin pala tagalin. Miss Mel, kumusta? Hello, everyone. Ayan. Miss Mel, kumusta, kumusta? So, this is our regular uh, weekdays live streaming. Ayan. Sa lahat ng mga nanood, I'm currently streaming on our uh, YouTube channel when in Halifax. So, tatlong, ano to, tatlong uh, platform. Sabi ni Alan, good morning, De! Good morning. Good morning, Cap Joey and his Mel. And of course, si Hubert. Ayan, si Hubert. Shout out sa lahat ng mga taga Bicol. Kumusta, kumusta po kayo? Ayan. Maray na banggi sa Induga Boss. Maray na aga. This is Bicol Maray. Ah, good morning. It means good morning. Hubert Cahill Johnson Montesor. Katropa ko to eh. Tropa pips ko to eh, si Hubert. Ayan. Of course, we have Peter. Good evening, Cap. Joy, may tanong po ako. Pwede po ba magka-process ng agency dito sa Pinas pero ang employer diyan sa Canada? Dapat po. Ano, 
i license dito sa Canada para makapag-process sila ng immigration. So ang agency po at immigration consultant ay magkaiba po ang license po noon. Yan. Um, kailangan din natin na uh, intindihin, dapat ito ito yung mga tip for everyone bago kayo makipag-deal, mag-agency yan, consultant yan, verify ninyo kung sila ay licensed immigration consultant or licensed Im lawyer. So Miss Mel Pagdating sa pagbe-verify ng licensed immigration consultant, saan sila pupunta? Um, go to the ICCRC website. Doon nyo po makikita kung sino yung mga nakalistang consultant. Ayan. So, ayan, ayan. Uh, maraming mga nagtatanong na din. Of course, sabi ni Peter, may... ay kakagawa ko na ng video na to. Panoorin, pa panoorin mo, Peter. Pero pag-uusapan pa din natin. Pwede rin po bang walang IELTS? Miss Mel, meron pang programa na walang IELTS? Meron naman, pero yun nga lang, dapat mo rin dapat isipin kung eligible ka ba sa program na yun. Ano ba yung walang IELTS? Una yes. sa lahat, pwedeng may klase ng mga working permit na hindi mo kailangan ng IELTS. Student visa po, pwede rin na walang IELTS. Depende ko anong klaseng pathway yung gagamitin mo sa pag-apply ng student visa. Pangatlo is pwede rin naman ang family sponsorship dahil hindi mo rin kailangan ng IELTS doon. <laughs> Pero with regards, Miss Mel, with a student, gusto ko lang balikan, i-highlight lang yon. May mga school or university, Miss Mel, na hindi naghahanap or nagre-require ng IELTS. Tama pa po, Miss Mel? Yes. Pero pagdating, Miss Mel, sa immigration, meron bang programa na walang IELTS? Aside doon sa sponsorship and, and um, um, other things. So, meron bang walang IELTS? Working permit. May mga mm -hmm. klase ng working permit. Mga pera lang sa caregiver, hindi pa nila kailangan ng IELTS kagad. Student mm -hmm. visa, under ng regular stream, hindi rin kailangan muna ng IELTS. Mm -hmm. So, yun. So, then, take note ninyo. Pero yung ginawa ko, Miss Mel, na vlog, sabi ko, huwag kayong matakot with regards to the language test. The reason why for that, pupunta ka sa isang bansa na English yung mood of communication. Almost 90% ng tao ay nagsasalita ng English. So, with or without language test, Miss Mel, I think kailangan natin mag-practice ng ating English language. And as a Filipino, Miss Mel, sabi ko nga, be proud. Kasi tayo mga Pilipino ay likas na magagaling magsalita. Ang kulang lang sa atin ay confidence. Yes. Yun na yung problema sa atin. And, and at the same time, ang problema sa atin ay mahilig mga chow. <laughs> Kaya nawawala yung confidence. Well, actually, kung may mga nahangan chow, take it on the positive way. Instead na take it in a negative way. So, gamitin mo rin yun uh, para maging optimistic ka rin. So, kung may nag-aasar, eh di patunayan mo sa kanya na mas magaling ako sa'yo. Eh di, you hit to uh, stone at the, uh, ano ba'y tawag nila doon? <laughs> ah, uh, you're hitting one stone in two birds. Yes. Ganun yung, ganun yung mga ano eh, ganun yung motto ni Hubert noon. Chickboy kasi yung kaibigan ko si Hubert Cahill. Nag-ibig na akong kinabangan. Hindi, joke lang. Pero, pero I mean, This is a very good to highlight, Miss Mel. Kung may nangangay si Chow, take it as a positive or in. Gawin mo as inspiration, okay? Kinakain siya, wala mo ko, then patutunayan ko sa'yo na magaling din ako magsalita. Kasi as a Filipino mga kap, tandaan natin, since elementary, since primary pa nga pala, hindi siya tayo eh. Kailangan lang talaga natin i-practice ng i-practice ng i-practice para maging matalas yung ating dila. Kasi ako, experience ko, si Hubert nanonood ngayon, makakapagpatunay na hindi rin ganun kagaling ako mag-English, di ba? Kahit ngayon, uh, makikita yung accent. But then, dahil sa araw-araw kong uh, pagsasalita, siguro napapractice na lang din yung smell, di ba? Yes. Okay. Ano na lang siya? Kailangan pumunta. Kasi yung iba, pumapantay sila doon sa mga accent. Especially kapag ka pumunta ka ng Canada na matanda na, mahirap na para sa atin na ma-adapt pa yung accent nila. As long as naiintindihan ka nila mag-English at naiintindihan din natin sila, eh pasok na sa banga ikaw. Tama. Ito yung tatandaan yung mga kap. Sa Pilipinas lang, very particular 
Correct me if I'm wrong, Miss Mela, pero this is my perspective. Sa ka- Pilipinas lang, nagkakaroon ng, alam mo yon yung very important, yung accent, yung grammar, di ba? Pagdating dito, wala yan. Ang importante ay tayo yung magkaintindihan. Yes. Di ba? So, ayan. Yes. So, everyone that are watching right now na natatakot mag-take ng language test, wag. Wag ka wag. dapat, wag ka, kung totoo sir, mas mahirap pa yung ating English subject sa Pilipinas kumpara mo dun sa English exam o yung tinatawag Correct. na ay Ang tinitik na, 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 na post ka mismo. But anyway, Yeah. Hello? Napotong. Natakot with regards to our to the English language dahil tayo po ay likas na ay ako pala yung naputol Miss Mel. But anyway, uh, sa mga sa mga kap natin na uh, inspiring or um dreaming to immigrate here in in Canada, um wag na wag na wag na wag po kayong matakot with the English language. Kasi number one na pag nagpumunta po kayo dito, ito yung communication nyo. Ito yung gagamitin nyo na as communication. And hindi kayo makakapag-racket, hindi kayo makakapag-trabaho, hindi kayo makakapag-extra, extra, extra job kung hindi po tayo um, confident na magsalita. And again nga, based on my experience, ang mga local dito, they're not particular with your accent, they're not particular with your grammar. Ang importante lang is makapag-intindihan kayo. And comment kayo if you're OFW, Comment kayo paano yung experience nyo with re- regards to the language. So yun, mga kap, for, for this discussion, be confident. Um, kung language yung pinag-uusapan natin, um, huwag matakot, practice today. Now na. As in, ngayon na. <laughs> ayan. So ayan, thank you, thank you very much, Miss Mel, for sharing all the insights, Peter. Thank you for this question. And we have another question. Ah, Sorry. Sabi ni Oliver, good morning, Cap Joey and Ma'am Mel, watching from Bacolod City. Hello? Wala pala City, Bacolod lang. <laughs> and, and Diane, good morning po, Cap, at, uh, Cap J. Ma'am Hello. Mel, eh, um, Ma'am Amelia, tuning from Hong Kong, sana po, sana wag po kayong magsawa at mapagod magbigay ng informasyon. Salamat po. As long as nandyan po kayo sumusuporta sa amin ni Joey, hindi po kami mapapagod. Ayan, nakakayak naman yun. Yeah. <laughs> Pero kasi namakita na hindi tayo mapapagod, para hindi ko pa tinanong. <laughs> <laughs> Pero totoo yun mga kap, as long as you're there, you're trusting us, you're supporting us, nandito po kami. And speaking of supporting, Miss Mel, mga kap, if you're watching right now, please share this video. Do we watch party? Share this with different groups because sharing is caring and this is also one way to to reach more kap or kapatid natin that are dreaming here in Canada. We have also Kate Lim, kap Joey Miss Mel, watching from Edmonton. Ano pang difference ng Alberta Opportunity Stream sa Alberta express entry stream for PGW holder? Actually, if you go on the eligibility, makikita mo kagad yung difference. So, express entry stream, ibig sabihin po niyan, wala po kayong job offer or wala ka pang experience in Alberta. Well, in the Alberta opportunity stream, pwede kang dito ka na nakapag-aral or pwede dito ka na nagkaroon ng working experience. Pero yung tinatanong mo na for PGWP holders, depende yan kung um, nag-aral ka dito sa Alberta. Pero check mo muna yung eligibility kung na-meet mo yun. Naputol ka. Questions. No, wala, wala yata, Miss Mel, ang aking internet connection. But anyway, thank you very much. As, hindi na wala yung internet connection namin kanina kasi kakatapos lang namin, Miss Mel, ng uh, mag-streaming kanina sa East Coast Filipino portal uh, with the topic of Black uh, Lives Matter. So, yun. But anyway... Nakakalungkot at uh, ang ating connection ay puputol-putol. But again, mga kap, tune, uh, ano, uh, tune in lang po kayo. Hindi kami aalis. <laughs> Ayan. Uh, Miss Mel, paulit lang, Miss Mel, kasi naputol kanina. 
yung about saan ko nung... Sa, ano yung difference ng Alberta Opportunity Stream sa Alberta Express Entry Stream? Express Entry Stream is wala siyang job offer. So, kung pwede ka makapag-apply niyan, kung ibig sabihin kapag ka nag-apply ka ng Express Entry at kinlik mo doon yung Alberta, at mapili yung position, ako ah, baga mapili yung profile mo ng Alberta, then pwede ka nilang i-invite for nomination. Where in Alberta office, uh, Opportunity Stream, um, ibig sabihin niyan meron ka ng working experience dito sa Alberta or nakapag-aral ka dito sa Alberta. Ayan. Thank you, Ms. Mother. We have also, Peter, in terms of documents requirement, yung mga school credential, kailangan po ba naka-red ribbon sa CHED, Ms. Mel? Kailangan ba naka-red ribbon, Ms. Mel? Hindi po. Mm -hmm. So, hindi naman kailangan. Ang kailangan lang natin ito ay uh, true, uh, certified true copy, Ms. Mel, or original copy from the school? Uh, original copy. Original copy. And then I think the school will process all these uh, no, documents sa inyo po. Yes. Uh, we have also Alan Monelas. Miss Mel, lahat ba na program sa Canada, meron ng January intake? Depende sa mga school. Pero karamihan ng mga nakikita ko ngayon because of COVID kasi lahat karamihan sa kanila nag-defer for January. So, karamihan ng mga skwelahan ngayon, parang naka-waitlist na sila. Pero meron pa rin namang school na nag accept Ayan, thank you, Miss Mel. We have also here, Bronze Cheche. Hello, Kap and Miss Mel. Accepted po bang experience ko as daycare worker for three years in applying for caregiving in Canada? Thanks po. Yes, it's accepted po. Ayan, we have also Aaron Lee Mercader. Hello po, quick question lang po. Nurse po ako dito sa Pinas, plan ko po is to secure student visa para sa winter intake next year. One year program palliative care in Niagara College sa Ontario. Another question is after po ng program goal is to secure one year PGWP and look for a employer sa healthcare field. PSW sa long term care facility from here po. Paano po ako matutulungan ng employer until pwede pa ako mag-apply ng PR? Actually, medyo malawak yung kanyang tanong kasi ang mm -hmm. kung is kung may valid ka naman PGWP, then wala naman maitutulong si employer kagad sa'yo um, in terms of documents kasi kaya ka nga may PGWP. It's because pwede kang magtrabaho anywhere in Canada. So, use that as an advantage para mahal ka ng mga employer. So, yun yung dapat mong i-highlight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, Miss Mel. And of course, may question po tayo kay Paronggao Rodalin. Good morning. Nagpunta po ako sa website ni Miss Ajok. Gusto ko kasi magpa one-on-one -on -one consultation sa kanya. May ginawa na po ako CV na consultation lang. Gusto kong isend mo na po kay Ma'am Ajok. Actually, if you already send it, one of my staff will gonna get back to you regarding with the summary of the assessment. So after noon, um, they will send you a link if you wanna book for one-on-one -on -one consultation. Yes, and I think your website, Miss Mel, they can book a consultation directly on the website. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, uh, oh, oh, sabi ah, uh, wala pa pala. <laughs> but you can do the live chat. Ayan, live chat. Parang Gao Rodalin, you can do the live chat if you have more questions. You can easily message Miss Mel to the live chat or on uh, on their Facebook, which is Ajok Intern uh, Facebook.com slash Ajok International. And we have also para po mabasa muna niya. Saka pwede ti naka, naka live ako ngayon. Anong oras na i-click ko doon sa website niya para Canada time po yata yun. Saka naman po mapili ko kung ano pong mas maluwag kay Ma'am Ajok. Ayan. Um, nandun po, meron pong calendar doon. So, naka-open po yun kung ano po yung availability po po. So, pinipin po yung ano doon. Pero naka-Edmonton time siya. So, naka-mountain time po yung ano. Ayan. So, if if you connect with, you can submit your resume on on Facebook or on the live chat. Maraming means to communicate with Ms. Mel. And then, once na nasa-receive yun, Mag, uh, may link na ibibigay sa iyo to book your consultation. Tama ba, Miss Mel? Yes. Yeah. So, yun. Napakaganda ng conversation natin with regards to the language test, to the maraming mga questions. 
But again, mga kap, if you want to ask question, this is the right time. Maybe hindi pa kayo sanay ngayon kasi weekdays ngayon. Sabi niya, kap, ang Sabado to, ah. <laughs> ano to, this is our one way to say thank you very much to everyone that are watching. Kasi sabi nga natin, bitin yung one hour pag sa Sabado. However, hindi kami kaya mag-extend, mga kap, kasi uh, that's 2 a.m. na sa akin pag nanatapos tayo. So, para ma-extend natin, ginawa namin another weekdays and weekends. So, yun, dalawang best tayo mag-live streaming every week. So, ngayon mga kap, this is our program. This is our regular program. So, tune in kayo if you have more questions ask now. Kasi tanong mo, sagot namin. So, we have po yan. Please watch and ask. Oh, si Chad, sec, watch na daw. Yes. Si Jay. May, uh, hi, Miss Melkap. Joey, ask ko lang po, ano pong ibig sabihin ng nor eligible to apply PR? Nakita ko lang kasi sa Canada Forum na may nag-post po ng working visa through home child care provider. Kasi po, if I'm not mistaken, pwede po mag-apply ng PR and caregiver pathway. Salamat po and God bless. Please clarify ko ano yung mismo nakita mo kasi um, may iba't ibang remarks or um, binibigay ang immigration. Pero yung pinaka-common is you're not eligible to apply under LCP. Ibig sabihin nun, hindi ka pwedeng mag-apply ng lead-in caregiver uh, dahil matagal na pong sarado yung program. Mm -hmm. Ayan mga kap, thank you very much. Ayan. So that's the last question from JJ. Ayan mga kap. So if you're watching right now mga kap, please join our virtual kapian or kapian sa well in Halifax on Thursday. Uh, kasama po ang ating admin na si Nico Hoson kung saan pag-uusapan natin ang Nova Scotia Provincial Nominee, ang kanyang pathway. At paano ba maging nurse dito sa Nova Scotia? Ano ba yung mga requirements? Ano yung mga kailangan gawin para makapag-practice ka ng iyong profession as a registered nurse? So if you want to join us, but just go to our Facebook page when in Halifax and click join. Okay, so sabi ni you know, Hubert, early morning. Dito, pag nag-live kayo, kaya mahirap mag-join kasi mag-iintay pa. Ayan, hehe, mahirap daw mag-join kasi early morning. That's very early. 8 a.m. <laughs> 8 a.m. sa Pilipinas, Miss Mel. Oh, mas maaga. Ang sabi na natin, mas magandang maaga para maaga. Charot lang. <laughs> Ayan. Ayan, Miss Mel, ah, wala silang mga tanong. So, we will do a Q&A sa atin. Um, Miss Mel, with regards to the caregiver, kasi napag-usapan natin caregiver, and eh, na-mention mo, Miss Mel, na kailangan um, two, year, two years... Kailangan nila mag-stay mo na dito or mag-work as two years bago ma-process yung permanent residence. Tama ba, Ms. Mel? And well, it's a new program. Well, actually, bago pa sila makarating ng Canada, na-process na yung kanilang application for permanent resident. So, tapos na yung medical, yung um, criminal check, lahat ng pwedeng mga i-check. Uh, tapos na siya. Ang tanging kulang na lang is yung 24 months working experience inside Canada. That's the reason kung bakit ang binibigay sa kanilang document ng government is open work permit muna. So after nila makomplete yung 24 months, then i-continue na ni government ang completion ng permanent resident. So yun. So before, let's imagine this mga kap, ikaw yung caregiver uh, uh, applicant ipinarases yung documents mo. Yung documents mo ay ready na for permanent residence. Right, Miss Mel? Ready, yes. ready na na na-evaluate na ka na. As in, ready na talaga. Ang kulang na lang na components doon, yung two years. Yep. Yung 24, 24 months. So, alam mo na. Sigurado ka na na after 24 months, magiging permanent residence ka na kasi for, for, from the First application mo ay for PR application na yun. Yung 24 months na Miss Mel, ito ba ay nagsisimula na or wala pa nakakapasok dito? So, anong status nito, Miss Mel? Kasi bago tong programa, right, Miss Mel? And matunog na tong pinag-uusapan. So, ang tanong dito, Miss Mel, meron na ba nakapasok sa programang ito? Wala pa po. Wala pa po nakakap... Wala pa lang na lumalabas na resulta for that immigration program. Pero definitely, marami na pong mga nag apply So, inside and outside, wala pa namang nakakalabas na result. Ayan. Ayan. Thank you, Miss Mel, with that. And mga kap, if you have more questions about caregiver, don't hesitate to ask questions kasi nandito si Miss Mel of Adjok International and of course, 
don't miss this opportunity kasi one hour lang to. So wag nang mahiya. Kung may tanong kayo, itanong nyo na kasi tanong nyo, sagot namin. And sabi ni Card Mohar, Mo Mofar Domingo, good day po sa inyo, Miss Melencap Joey. And may additional question daw si Bronze Cheche. Additional question po, Miss Mel. TOR lang po ba ang ipapasa, ipapasa assess, ipapa-assess sa ECA? Undergrad po ako ng degree, course 2, second, course second year college lang. Pasado po kaya ito, ma'am? Saan po kaya pwede magpa-assess? Actually, yung pasado o hindi, depende yan kung saan mong program gagamitin yung ECA. So, ang trabaho lang naman talaga ni ECA is, is i-assess or i-equivalent yung nakuha mo sa Pilipinas kung ano ka pantay ng in Canada. Pero ang mga kap pagsabi kung pasado sa program o hindi is yung immigration. So, gusto ko na elaborate. Halimbawa, ang nakuha mo is high school graduate. Pwede mo siyang gamitin into AITP, pero hindi mo siya pwedeng gamitin, hindi mo siya pwedeng gamitin into caregiver pathway kasi ang caregiver pathway, one year po secondary yung requirement. Mm -hmm. So, with regards to the ECA mga ka, ito ay parang tinitimbang yung ating education sa Pilipinas dyan sa Canada, dito sa Canada. So, halimbawa, hindi po kasi equivalent yung ating education system, especially yung mga CAP natin na wala pang K plus 12. Yes. So, ang trabaho ng ECA to easily understand it, tinitimbang po. So, ito yung education mo sa Pilipinas, ano yung equivalent dito sa Canada? So, tinitimbang yeah. niya. Diba, Miss Mel? So usually, yeah. Miss Mel, with the trend, ano nangyayari, Miss Mel? Kung kunyari, let's say, uh, two-year to uh, second-year college sa Pilipinas, in, in your experience, Miss Mel, ano usually ang resulta ng ECA? Kung tinitimbang ito, kung second-year college, graduate, uh, second year lang ang natapos, hindi nakapagtapos talaga, second year lang sa Pilipinas, ano usually, based from your experience, ano yung usually equivalent sa Canada niyan? Depende sa ECA na ginagamit eh, o yung assessing body na ginagamit. Kung halimbawa, mm -hmm. ay West, medyo ay, hindi ay, resulta ng West magbigay ng result. So, mm -hmm. baka assess lang yan ni, ni West ng um, high school graduate or first year uh, post-secondary in Canada. Pero kapag ka yung ibang assessing company, pwedeng most likely one year post-secondary in Canada yan. Pero ang highlight kasi doon sa atin niya, undergraduate siya. Hindi niya natapos mm -hmm. yung years. So, kung halimbawa, nakagraduate ka ng two-year course, karamihan nung mga ibang assessing company, mapwera lang sa EC, sa West, is one year post-secondary. Yun nga lang, kung hindi niya natapos din yung two years, then baka doon magkaroon ng problema kung paano nila i-assess yung transcript of records. Mm -hmm. So, ayan, napakalinaw yung mga cups. So, if you have more questions about um, ECA or um, ECA or West, feel free to ask question kasi kasama natin si Miss Mel, our hashtag immigration license consultant ng Ajok International. And of course, Miss Mel, maraming salamat for spending your valuable time with us. So, walang sawang pagsusuporta at pagsishare ng knowledge and ex uh, expertise to everyone para ma matupad ang mga pangarap ng ating mga kap na makapunta dito sa Canada. Yeah. Mas sa inyo, lalo na sa'yo. Yes, maraming salamat. And we have Ferd Sabra. Hi, Miss Mel Cap. Joey, ask ko lang po, sana kung kailangan po ba ng NBI kahit sa ibang bansa nag-work for work permit, Miss Mel? Kailangan pa ng NBI, Miss Mel? Yes, definitely. So anywhere na nakapag-work ka o nakapag-stay ka na more than six months, after mong mag-18 years old, then kailangan mo na mag-provide ng police clearance. Ayan. Thank you, Mel. So, isa, isa sa, na, kasi nag-live, nag-gumawa tayo, Miss Mel, ng live, um, webinar or, or live streaming last time with regards to the NBR. You mentioned doon, Miss Mel, na kapag sa Saudi, na hindi, wala ka na sa Saudi, you have a work experience, pero currently, wala ka na sa Saudi, na, let's say, for example, nasa Pilipinas ka na. Kailangan pa ba, Miss Mel, ng uh, police clearance for, for that. Nag-work ka sa Saudi, pero umuwi ka na, 
wala kang na current sa, sa Saudi na sa Pilipinas ka na, kailangan pa ba ng police clearance? In that case, hindi na kasi hindi magre-release ang Saudi kapag ka wala, ka, wala ka na doon. Ayun. So kung sa Saudi lang yun mismo, ano? Hindi po yun applicable sa ibang ano bansa. So kung nasa Hong Kong ka, you have a work experience in Hong Kong, umuwi ka sa Pilipinas at dito ka na nag-process, kailangan po ba mismel ng police clearance for that scenario? Yes. Yes. Ayan. Ex- sa Saudi lang talaga. So, yun. Um, yun. Sorry, Miss Mel? Saudi lang talaga yung may exemption. Ayan. So, task kamay ng mga taga-Saudi. A big shout out po sa inyo. Ayan. And of course, speaking of NBI, speaking of NBI mga kap, so if you are here in Canada or you want to pass your NBI clearance, I think Adjok International is offering this service. Miss Mel, pwede bang i-explain for us ano yung tulong na may, ma, or, or services about NBI clearance, Miss Mel, ng Adjok International? So, we can help you with police clearance uh, for Philippines, Hong Kong, at saka UAE po. Kung kayo po ay nasa Edmonton, I can help you as well with the fingerprinting. So, that's a good news para sa mga lahat or dito sa mga nasa, nasa mga lahat eh, no? Nasa Edmonton, uh, hindi nyo na po kailangan mag-request ng NBI form sa uh, Philippine Consulate. Meron na po kami sa office. So, contact us at 780-357-3996 para po ma-assist kayo ng aking mga staff. Ayun. So, if you are here in Canada and you want your uh, you want to have a Philippine N- yung NBI natin sa Pilipinas, si Adjok International ay nagpo-provide ng servisyo ng ganyan. Miss Mel, sa Canada lang po ba? Halimbawa na sa abroad. Uh, Dubai, Abu Dhabi, gusto ka niyang, gusto niya ipaprice yung NBI nila. Possible ba yun? Pwede ba yun? Possible naman, yun nga lang, lahat kasi ng mga mga appearances, dito babagsak sa Edmonton. I see. Ayan. So, I highly recommend yung mga kababayan natin, mga cups natin nandito sa Halifax. Um, kung kailangan nyo ng NBI, um, NBI, please connect to Miss Mel at matutulungan po kayo nyo with regards to that process. Ayan, maraming maraming salamat. Very convenient sa'yo, Miss Mel, no? Lahat, parang lahat ng services with regards to the immigration, meron ka. You mentioned about the NBI. And what else, Ms. Mel? Ano pa yung mga services na available sa'yo? We know about immigration because you're a licensed immigration consultant. Aside from the immigration na mention mo yung NBI, what else na hindi pa namin alam? Baka pwede mo naman i-share sa atin. <laughs> so, as a professional po, we are an uh, RCMP approved fingerprinting company. So, kung kailangan nyo po ng mga Canadian um, police clearance, mga name check or anything, mga vulnerable check, kung kayo po ay nagtatayo ng negosyo, then we can help you as well. At the same time po, I am also a licensed uh, financial advisor. So, I can also help you with your insurance. So, for example, meron kayong pam- uh, you want to apply for super visa at mandatory um, insurance ng iyong parent, I can help you to do that as well. So yun. So looks like Miss Mel, pag pag nagpa-process ako ng uh, applications, ay parang one-stop shop. Yes, as much as possible you own you own in-aim namin. So eventually um in the next few months we are also that uh, launching um new services po. So stay tuned po doon sa aming Facebook page and also with the website para po um ma-update po namin kayo. Yeah, napakaganda, napakaganda talaga. So yan, if you want to connect with Miss Mel, feel free to message her on their Facebook uh, page, which is ad- uh, facebook.com slash international or go to their website, adjokinternational.ca. Ayan, maraming salamat, Miss Mel. And of course, we have Bernadine Avila Kapundag. I'm a nurse with clinical experience. Counted po ba yun as experience? Counted ba yun, Miss Mel? Yung clinical experience, kung yan ay bayad, then definitely counted siya. Yun nga lang, saan mo gagamitin yung work experience na yan? Mm-hmm. Yes, and of course, kung clinical experience yan, uh, ako, mag-assume ako ito sa hospital. Parang hindi ako nag-hospital din ako. <laughs> Ayan. Uh, I mean, you have, you have an advantage. Ano, uh, 
uh, explore the Nova Scotia website, novascotiaimmigration.com. So, yun. Eh, kasi last time nag sila na nagkaroon ng opportunity sa mga um, nurses. And thank you, Miss uh, Bernadette, Kat Bernadette. We have also Alan here. Miss Mel, mas advisable po ba ang SDS pag mag-apply para sa online na kaagad kaysa sa regular process na email sa inyo? Actually, um, regardless naman kung SDS or regular, um, hindi naman ibig sabihin na nag-SDS ka, meaning 100% approved na yung application mo. So, minsan kasi, kaya the reason kung bakit sila nag-SDS, marami rin kasing kailangan i-factor out. Pero also, i-acknowledge mo din na mag english exam ka, magbabayad ka ng one year na tuition fee, mag-a-apply ka ng GIC, kung yun eh, okay lang din naman sa'yo at meron ka naman talagang ibibigay, then why not? Ayan. Miss Mel na mention natin SDS and I know we have lots of new names dito, Miss Mel. Ano ba yung SDS? It stands for Student Direct Stream, Miss Mel? Yes. So, dalawa ang klase ng pag apply ng international student dito sa Canada when it comes for the student visa. So, pwede sila mag-apply ng SDS o yung student direct stream. Pwede rin sila mag-apply ng regular stream. So, kapag ka mag apply ka ng SDS, ang requirement nila is the bayaran mo yung tuition fee ng isang taon. Um, mag-apply ka ng GIC sa Canada for about 10,000 Canadian dollar at may dapat meron kang English exam general kung yan ang IL, um, ang required score is 6. So kung meron ka ng tatlong yon you have the option to apply for SDS. Anong pinagkaibahan ng dalawang yon Ang SDS, wala kasing nakikita or na rule out niya na yung financial. So kung marerefuse yung papeles mo, hindi yan dahil sa finances. Ayun. So, between Miss Mel with the regular stream and the SDS or the student direct stream, Miss Mel, ito na lang tanong, alin, alin sa dalawa ang mas magastos? Definitely, mas magastos yung SDS. Kasi kung halimbawa, yung school mo hindi nagre-require ng IELTS, para makapag-apply ka ng SDS, mag apply ka or mag-take ka na naman ng exam. Buti sana kung mura lang yan, eh medyo mahal din yung IELTS exam na yun. Ayan. In terms naman, Miss Mel, regular and SDS in terms of um, mabilis, alin sa dalawa? Definitely mas mabilis ang SDS. Before COVID, uh, usually nakaka-receive kami ng result in a matter of five days. Mm-hmm. Ayun. In terms naman, Miss Mel, talagang ganun, no? Regular and SDS, Miss Mel. Ano mga school ang pwede niyang apag-aralan kung gusto ka mag-aral? May limitation ba, Miss Mel? Or Wala. parehas lang sila? Parehas lang. So, kahit saan ka mag-enroll, walang engkaso. As long as, kumbaga, ano lang yan, eh. Yung SDS and regular. Um, immigration yan, eh. So, yeah. kung anong, paano mo i-apply ang iyong student visa. So, ibig sabihin, kung mag apply ka ng student visa, meron ka ng letter of acceptance from the school. So, hindi si skwelahan din ang magsasabi sa'yo kung gusto mo mag-apply or kailangan mag-apply ka ng SDS or regular. Kung baga, choice mo yon as an applicant. Ayan. Thank you, Ms. Mel. And napakaganda ng discussion natin with regards to that kasi very confusing yung regular SDS. At least ngayon, napakalinaw na. So, if you agree na napakalinaw at naintindihan nyo yung SDS at regular SIM, comment it below, mga ka. So, we have another. Thank you very uh, thank you very much, Alan, for that questions. And of course, sabi ni um, sabi ni Bronze, check. Check, check. Thanks so much, ka, Joey and Ms. Mel. Ayan, mga ka. If you're watching right now on our YouTube, please paki keep in dot naman ang ating subscribe button and of course, please on the notification para na notified kayo sa ating mga live streaming and of course we have meron po ako mga cup unity cup mustahan so mga quick live ito mga surprise to para na bibigla kayo ha? live si cup <laughs> ayan but we have a regular live streaming every Saturday we had 11 a.m. so yun. Daniel Sanchez, good morning, sir. Kami, Miss Mel, ilang years experience dito sa Pinas po ang need bago mag-apply as a home child care provider. Ilang years ba, Miss Mel, ang kailangan for the home child care provider? 
at least one year paid work experience po ang kailangan. So ayan. So one year. Paid. Take note of paid, Miss Mel. Miss Mel, pag paid ba, enough na ba, Miss Mel, na paid siya ng kapamilya? Let's say, uh, Lolo, paid siya ng, uh, an, uh, ng auntie or ng kapatid. Enough na ba yun na kung sila paid experience or ano yung mga kailangan, Miss Mel, para mapatunay na it's a paid experience and valid sa immigration ng Canada? Siyempre, pagka sinabi mo na paid work experience, kailangan mong patunayan kung paano ka binabayaran. So, kailangan na yung mga proof. Paano mo natatanggap yung sweldo mo? Paano ka binabayaran ng iyong employer doon sa nire-render mong service sa kanila? So, you need to have a document. A supporting document saying, hey, paid to ho, eto yun. May documents ako. Eto yung proof na ako ay nagsasahon. So, ayan. Ayan, napakalinaw mga kap. So, mar kasi maraming nagtatanong, Miss Mel, ay ako po ay binabayaran ng aking lolo para mag-alaga sa kanila. Uh, ito po ba ay consider speed experience? So again, babalik pa rin sa ating sinabi, you need documents para mapatunayan na ikaw ay binabayaran or meron kang sahod. Miss Mel, for everyone na hindi pa familiar with, the, with that uh, kind of scenario, ano ba yung mga documents para mapatunayan na ikaw talaga ay nagsasahod at paid experience? Ano mga example ng documents? Uh, sa Pilipinas na settings. Yeah. So, definitely certificate of employment kung kayo ay may kontrata ng employer. Um, mm -hmm. Pay stub o yung mga pay slip na tinatawag. Mm -hmm. uh, Copter ng check eh. Kung mm -hmm. nag sila ng check eh. At finally is yung mga tax declaration. Yun. So, yun mga take, take note yung mga kapa. Kasi marami tayong natanggap ng mga tanong with regards to the caregiver. And by the way, we are currently uh, doing a... Uh, uh, tawag nito? Nakalimutan ko. Watch party! <laughs> We're currently doing watch party in our caregiver cup unity. So, shout out sa lahat ng mga caregiver members ng caregiver cup unity natin. Shout out po sa inyo. So, anyway mga kap, to make sure na meron kayong valid na paid experience, sabi nga ni Ms. Mel, ang mga documents ay uh, paid stub, syempre. Patunay mo na nakatanggap ka ng sahod, mga taxes, uh, kontrata, and then at the same time, yung certificate of employment. Ms. Mel, maraming salamat with this insights and uh, informations. We have also Amy Cruz. Good morning, Cap. Joey Ms. Mel, watching from Quezon City, Philippines. Hello po. Si June Christine, good day po kapi Miss Mel. Magtatanong lang po kung mag-expire na ang open work permit at nakapag-apply na po ng PNP sa Manitoba. Ano po ang gawin para ma-extend ang work permit while waiting for nomination? Matatapos na rin po ang student permit ni Asawa in few months. Salamat po Miss Mel. Kailangan mo panatilihin ang legal status mo sa Manitoba or uh, legal status mo in Canada para hindi ka magkaroon ng problema when it comes sa iyong immigration application. So kung wala pa yung nomination, then you need to find an employer kung ikaw man eh dating mga, kung ikaw ay dependent ng student visa, kailangan mo ng employer para ma-turn yan into closing work permit or kung student visa pa rin si, uh, si wife or si husband, baka pwede mo pang i-extend yung open work permit mo using the status of your spouse. Ayun. Thank you, Ms. Mel. And of course, mga kap up I would like to invite you on Thursday po, join us virtual kapihan, kapihan sa one in Halifax, third kapito with Nico Hoson po. So yun, kita-kits po tayo doon. We have also Carl Mofuar Domingo, enrolled po ako sa school with full tuition plus other supporting documents po. Ang show mga ni Kaso ay was denied po twice. Mukhang di po yata pwede uh, sa akin yung student pathway. I'm a registered nurse with two years experience, ER po. Ano po kaya ang pwedeng pathway, Ms. Mel? In this kind of situation, I strongly suggest to book a one-on-one -on -one consultation kasi kailangan ko nang tingnan kung ano ba yung mga reason kung bakit ka nare-refuse. Baka kasi um, hindi siya upgrade ng iyong pinag-aralan nung kinukuha mong 
uh, course dito sa Canada, baka yun yung kailangan mong baguhin. Otherwise, baka may problema when it comes doon sa mga documents na, na pinapakita mo. Like you said, may show money ka. Um, enough ba yung show money mo? Or baka kulang yung show money mo? So, depende yan kung ano yung refusal reason. And at the same time, dito mismo pumapasok na kung kailan, dito pumapasok ang tanong, kung kailan mo kailangan ng isang expert and immigration consultant. Kasi you tried your best to do it yourself, pero na-deny ka, baka kailangan mo ng professional and um, expert on this thing. Baka kailangan mo ng isang consultant para tulungan ka. So, sabi ko nga, with our platform, Ms. Mel, we help our DIYers. And our live streaming is one way to help our DIYers. Pero kung ikaw ay na-deny na for second time, third time, baka kailangan mo na ng tulong. ba? Diba? So yun, if you're asking for help, for professional advice, a licensed immigration consultant, huwag na po tayong titingin sa iba, kundi tingnan nyo ang screen nyo. Ayan, nandyan po si Miss Mel. Ayan. Yes. And Sabay ka na, nandito ako. <laughs> <laughs> Ayan. Magi, uh, Magi Manalon. Hello po, good day po, Miss Mel at Cap Joey watching from Mindoro. Tanong ko lang po, yung tungkol sa new pathway ng Agri-Food Pilot Program, teacher po ako, pwede ba magtrabaho as a farm worker? Pwede ba yung Miss Mel, teacher, magtrabaho as a farm worker under Agri-Food Pilot Program? Kailangan niyo po muna magkaroon ng work experience under farm para po ma-qualify po kayo sa Agri-Food Pilot Program or para makapunta kayo ng Canada using a work permit. Ayun. This is very interesting, Ms. Mel, kasi I think sa probinsya uh, sa ako galing, Bicol, ayan, shout out sa lahat naman taga Bicolano. Ms. Mel, sa Agri-Pilot Program po ba, Ms. Mel, ay farmer, may sariling uh, lupa, nag, nag, uh, uh, nagtatanim ng palay, Pasok ba yun, Ms. Mel? As long as meron kang enough proof na ginagawa mo or gi uh, ginagawa mo yung in-offer sa yung trabaho, then pasok yun. So, paano yun, Ms. Mel? Kailangan din paid experience, uh, work experience, ganyan? Yes. So, kung, kung iyan is eh, sa'yo, pwede naman yung may mga klase sila na mga papeles na uh, binibigay sa mga co-op eh. Depende lang kung iyong lugar mo is eligible for co-op, then pwede ka dun humingi. Otherwise, pwede rin naman yung mga business registration. Although, mm -hmm. hindi siya ganun ka-common kasi sa atin kapag ka mga agri, kasi mga agriculture, kasi usually, basta may lupa ka, pwede mong sakahan. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Eh, yung problema. Uh, so, if you're thinking about agri, agri, uh, agri program or agri food pilot program, kailangan mo i-prove na you are employed or it's either um, owner. So, the bottom line is kailangan mo i-prove na ikaw talaga meron kang experience on this program. Di ba, Ms. Mel? Yes. With regards to the farm farm work, Ms. Mel, wala ba nas naka-specify na specific Farming or let's say for example mushroom. Uh, uh, ano pa ba, ba mga ano mushroom na alam ko? Eh. Mushroom rice. Meron ba <laughs> specific? Medyo malawa kasi yung agri food eh. So pwede nga rin yung butcher dyan eh. Depende mm -hmm. lang paano yung butcher. Kung yan ay retail, pasok siya. Or yan eh nasa ano ka, mas malaking lugar o yung mga plantahan, then pasok siya. Pinaka best way is tingnan mo kung ano yung nandun sa website. And if you feel na pasok ang iyong requirements, then go for it. Ayan. Thank you very much, Ms. Mel. And of course, mga kap, if you're watching right now, mga kap, ang bilis ng oras, huwag mong kalimutan na pindutin niyang subscribe button dyan sa YouTube natin and on the notification bell. And of course, if you're watching on our Facebook, huwag na pong mahihiya. Click the follow and the like button of When in Halifax and Agile International. And of course, join our Pinoy Canada Immigration Forum. Join, baka ikaw na lang po ang hindi nagsasama. Lahat na po sila join at ikaw na lang naiiwan. At baka itong Pinay Canada Immigration Forum ay makatulong sa iyong mga pangarap makapunta dito sa Canada kasi lumalaki na ang ating cap unity and sharing is caring. Sabi ni Geraldine, puso-puso lang. Ayan. I'm late. Bakit ka late? <laughs> Ayan, sabi ni Rhea Isanan. Hello, Miss Melon Cup. Joey, anong ko lang po kung 
ako ay PO ay nag-apply sa caregiver pathway at nakapagtrabaho as caregiver. Ano tapos ko halimbawa ang aking kontrata, pwede po ba mag-work sa ibang trabaho na hindi as a caregiver? Definitely po pwede naman po, pero pinaka-best way niyan is antahin niyo po muna ng matapos yung 24 months na uh, work experience na requirement ng caregiver para maibigay sa iyo ni government ang completion ng permanent resident. Mm -hmm. Pwede, I think mara mas malinaw, uh, Rhea, humanap ka ng ibang trabaho kapag hawak mo na yung PR card mo. Tama ba, Bismel? Somehow yung kasi... Yung ginagano um, mo yung PR card. Alam kasi kung gaano katagal yung completion eh. Siyempre, it's also a process from the government, yeah. right? Pero yeah. since ang requirement lang naman ni government is 24 months, mm -hmm. then kung naka-24 months ka, valid pa rin naman yung open work permit mo, then okay ka na magtrabaho sa iba. Pero kung ikaw ay taong sigurista, then mm -hmm. antay talaga yung permanent re uh, resident card mo para balikan ka man ni government. Yeah. Wala ang ano na, o, oh, nag-work pa rin ako under the caregiver. Correct, yeah. I mean, sabi nga natin, sigur, sigurista. So, dapat hawak mo na yung PR card. Nagaganda mo na, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Napapaypay mo na yung PR card. Ayan, of course, si Ian Rapadas is watching. Ian, kumusta, kumusta ang New Brunswick dyan? Ayan, nakita ko yung mga pictures mo, eh. Parang may binili ka sa NSCC, ah. Kaya nga, eh. <laughs> Parang na-enjoy mo yung binili mo, ah. Mahirap yung hanapin sa Pilipinas. <laughs> Alam mo man may level yun, Miss Mel? May yung, ano yun, may level. Yung, yung ano, yung, yun na yun. Parang yung strength. Sige, pag-usapan natin yan mamaya. Ayan, <laughs> sabi ko na, no? sabi, sabi ni mga ano, ano yun, mga level-level na yan. Wala lang. <laughs> sabi <laughs> ni Chris, Joey, Miss Mel, feasible po ba makapag-process ng PR if one-year program intake ko while hobby is open work for me? If in case... Kasi I trying to program in line with my education background medtech rather than my work sales background po. Yes, possible naman. Ayan. We have also JJ. Ma'am Mel, Sir Joey watching from Italy. Ask ko lang na, ask lang po namin kung may capacity po or limit ang application na tinatanggap this year for caregiver and home care per year. Kasi po, plan ma namin mag-pass late this year. Thanks po. Is there any reason bakit magpapas ka ng late this year? Kasi kung wala naman at iyan eh, itong call sa mga requirements, kung hawak mo na rin naman yung mga requirements, then might as well apply it early. Dahil ang caregiver program is a pilot program. Yes, meron po limitation yan. Meron po silang number of applicants na pinatanggap. And kapag ka na puno na yun, then technically mawawala na po itong pilot program. And again, mga kap, take note natin yung pilot. Ibig sabihin, hindi po permanent yun. So sabi ko nga, Miss Mel, with our videos and live streaming, kung meron kayong pagkakataon ngayon, do it now. Kasi hindi po natin alam yung changing ng mga programs, Miss Mel. Wish lang natin na mas madali. ba? Diba? What if mas mahirap? What if mas maraming requirements? ba? Diba? So if you think na pasok na pasok sa banga, <laughs> pasok na pasok sa banga ang inyong mga application, bakit mo patatagalin pa? Do it now, JJ. JJ, do it now. <laughs> Ayan. <laughs> Ayan. Um, of course, sabi niya, parang uh, Rodaline, 53 years old, 13 years bus driving experience sa Pilipinas, ano pong pwedeng entry sa Canada? High school graduate po. Um... Better find an employer as a driver uh, na makakapagbigay sa iyo ng LMIA para makapag-apply ka into working permit. I think is well the EIPP program pas pin sa kanya no. EIPP at saka maalala ko nga pala ang mga truck driver ngayon kung yan ay hindi Alberta at saka Saskatchewan, hindi na nila kailangan ng LMIA. Mhm. Mm so parang ngao, uh, parang gaw, Rodaline try to explore explore those opportunity. Ma Alam mo bang Miss Mel na mataas din ang sahod ng ano ng rate ng mga truck driver? Magkano magkano Miss Mel? Alam for for everyone that are watching right now and this is to inspire everyone. Magkano Miss Mel ang rate din sa Edmonton ng truck driver? So median wage nila nagre-rate sila ng 30 $30 to 45. May mm -hmm. Depende rin kasi yan kung anong klase yung daladala nila eh. Pero kaya eh, may dala kang halimbawa yung mga dangerous foods, 
mas malaki ang mga sweldo nila or kung ikaw eh pumupunta na sa US para mag-drive, kumbaga yung mga inter-country na mga driving, mas malalaki ang mga sweldo ng mga yun. Correct. And this is to inspire to all our truck drivers is this is skilled work po yun. Dito sa Canada, napakataas po yun. So actually, sinerge ko sa Google mismo yan. Ang average is 22 per hour. Average po yun ha. So ang, ang pinakamataas based from the data uh, ng Canada is 41 mismo yan. Mm -hmm. 41 Canadian dollars. Wala nakaspecify na province ha. That's the average lang po. So 22 per hour to 41 per hour. Imagine so, yun. Sa mga truck driver, if you're watching right now, be inspired. Do it now. If you have the opportunity, go, go na. Ayan. Go, go. Ayan si Evelyn Calderon. Good morning sa inyo. Malabo po ba ang student pathway to Canada because of financial issues? Nursing graduate ako with one year experience. Pwede po ba? Uh, pwede ba if AIP ang next option ko? Or caregiving home child care, uh, care career pathway? Care, care, uh, Ang AAPP is may show money din. So, kung yan ang issue, kaya hindi ka makapag-apply na, ano, might as well find an employer under the caregiver pathway para makapag-apply ka doon sa program na yun dahil sila hindi nila kailangan ng uh, tawag doon ng show money. Yeah. So, with regards to the caregiver, uh, caregiver Miss Mel, walang show money ang caregiver, yung new pathway. Walang show money, Miss Mel, yung caregiver pathway. Yung new, new pathway. Ayan. Thank you, Miss Mel. So, ayan, if you, if you, if financial yung problema natin, eh, uh, Evangeline, if, if, sorry, binang, um, if financial yung problema natin, take the advice of Miss Mel na try to explore the caregiver new pathway. And then, so sa EIPP, mayroong show money. However, yung show money ng EIPP ay hindi gaano kataas compared sa express entry. So, ayan. We have also din yung Sanchez follow-up question ko kay, uh, follow-up question ko po kay Cap Joey Miss Mel. Kailangan po ba ng child provider graduate ka ng college or pwedeng kahit second year college lang? Ayan. Miss Mel. Kailangan ka, yung resulta ng iyong ECA dapat is one year po secondary. So kung ikaw ay graduate ng, prog uh, ng college, sa Pilipinas, definitely hindi ka magkakaroon ng problema. Pero kung second year college ka lang, might as well ipa-assess mo muna yung TOR, yung transcript of records, para malaman mo kung talagang eligible ka sa program. And yung ECA lang, mga kap, mga ECA lang ang makakapag-provide ng final. Ayan. So, yun. So, yung ECA or ed Education Credential Assessment. So, yun. We have also STO, STO Ragua Ay. <laughs> hindi mabasa yung mga lang. Estero, Estero, Estero. Hello po, watching from Taiwan, interested to apply caregiver, have five years experience in early, early caregiver. And if you're interested, mga ka, please there, uh, message Miss Mel. Miss Mel, nagpo-post ka ba ng, ano, ng mga job openings for caregiver? Yes, pinopost ko po sa aming uh, Facebook page yung mga available jobs na meron po kami ngayon. So mga kap, if you're watching right now, you are a caregiver or maybe you're a registered nurse, you're looking for an employer, please tune in, follow Adjok International Facebook page at baka makakita kayo or baka ito na ang employer naghihintay para sa inyo. Ayan. Yes. We have lead 0926, good AM po from Philippines, uh, Kap Joey Miss Mel. Ask ko lang po, kung pwede Pwede na mag-send ng resume sa mga employer while waiting sa result ng ECA. Kaya giver pathway, salamat po sa lahat ng info. Keep safe. Pwede naman, as long as hindi naman mandatory ng employer kagad yung ECA. Then wala namang problema. Yan. We have car. Uh, paano po kayo, uh, paano ko po kayo ma-reach Miss Mel, Sir Joey, on how to resolve my problem? Mukhang kailangan ko po yung expert advice ninyo po. Uh, you can easily connect with Miss Mel through the Facebook account. It's facebook.com slash Adjok International or go to the website adjokinternational.ca. So meron po dun, uh, free assessment tool. You can click that one or you can send a direct message to the live chat po. Yan. 
That's the easiest way. If you are comfortable with Facebook, very active si Miss Mel, si Miss Mel, <laughs> si Miss Mel sa Facebook po. Ayan. Carl, message mo na si Miss Mel right now. We have Charmaine and good morning po Miss Mel Cap Joey uh, regarding po caregiver pathway, home care and nanay lang po ba ang options? Ayon RN, meron po bang home care for kids? Parang daycare. Uh, papasok siya under ng child uh, child provider or child care. Mm -hmm. So, kailangan mo din. Kailangan ba ni Mel ng work experience for that? Like, if you're a registered nurse, we're working in the hospital, kailangan ba meron ka experience for for kids? Yes, definitely. Kung ano yung ina-apply yung mong trabaho, dapat meron ka rin may provide na documentation na na-meet mo yung uh, or na-meet mo yung job offer. Ayan. Thank you, Ms. Well. We have also Jan Canadian. Ask ko lang po, ano po, ano, ano ang kailangan na ipasa ng employer para makapagbigay ng LMIA at close work permit sa employee? Nasa Canada na po ako. Salamat po. Depende sa klase ng, um, uh, ng business ng employer kung ano yung mga kailangan niyang ibigay as requirements. Ang uh, number one dyan is yung mga T1 ng employer at marami pa siyang mga documents na kailangan uh, ibigay. And uh, John, um, if you're here in Canada and, and, uh, and your employer has difficulty or very challenging for them to uh, to process yung, yung application, I strongly suggest connect with Ms. Mel. I think Ms. Mel is also helping not just kayo Pwede din sa employer, right, Ms. Mel? So, mga employer na nahihirapan i-process yung mga documents na kanyang applicant, pwede din mag-process si Ms. Mel, right, Ms. Mel? Definitely. Um, ever since po, nagpa-process po ako ng LMIA for employers. So, kung ang employer nyo po, or meron kayo nakita ang employer, at uh, tingin nyo hindi kaya ng employer, then definitely we can help them. As, at the same time, pwede po namin kayong tulungan para malaman po natin kung legit yung mga nagbibigay sa inyo ng mga job sponsorship. Kasi alam ko, when it comes with Facebook, ang daming lumalabas ngayon na mga, um, ng mga, uh, mga ads na nagsasabi to bibigyan ka namin ng LMIA pero medyo confusing or medyo iba yung kanilang offer. So, pwede kitang tulungan para lang i-assess kung meron bang red flag doon sa advertisement nila o wala. And thank you, Miss Mel, with your help. And of course, sabi ni Jan Canadian, malaking tulong talaga ang mga ganitong program. Those po, Cap Joey and Miss Mel. Yeah. We have also uh, Eli Kelly. Good day po, government teacher. Ano po kayang pathway pwede sa akin? Pwede po bang ibang work na lang applyan ko since need ng license sa Canada? Pwede ba yung Miss Mel? Ibang license, ibang work na lang? Uh, pa government teacher siya and then mag-apply siyang other work like for example, um, sa restaurant. Pwede ba yung Miss Mel? Depende. Kasi kung ikaw ay darating ng Canada under ng open work permit, then wala namang inkaso. Pero okay. kung ikaw ay darating ng Canada under ng work permit, then dapat mong patunayan muna with the immigration na kaya mo talagang gawin ng trabaho na ina-applyan. So ibig sabihin, Ms. Mel, with regards to the question, depende kung anong hawak niyang papel. Yes. Diba? Kasi kung, kung open work permit ka from the word itself open, pwede kang trabaho. Yeah. Pero kung ang papel mo ay work uh, work permit na naka-specify yung ano mo um work mo so dun lang yes so thank you well. we have a Rosalina Matalang paano po makapag-apply ng visa ngayon kung sarado ang VFS paano nga we smell eh sarado yung VPS VFS pwede ka naman mag-online application yun nga lang may ipit lang siya when it comes sa biometrics Ayan. Miss Mel, for everyone that are watching right now, napakabilis ng oras. We're streaming for one hour. Miss Mel, this is our last question, Miss Mel. Um, ano ba, Miss Mel, ang VFS para sa lahat na nanonood ngayon? Si VFS, sila yung contracted ng Canadian Embassy na tatanggap ng application. So, before kasi, lahat ng application sinasubmit kay Canadian Embassy. So, halimbawa, ako, or ikaw, Joey, gusto mo mag-apply ng working visa, pwede kang pumunta diretso kay Canadian Embassy na, oy, eto yung application ko. Ngayon, 
si BFS muna yung inbound at saka outbound. So, kung magsasubmit ka ng application kay BFS ka pupunta, kapag naman ikaw ay nakatanggap na approve na yung application mo at kailangan na istampan ng Canadian Embassy, then sa kanila mo pa rin ibibigay. Sila ang magbibigay sa Canadian Embassy. Ayan. Thank you very much, mga kap. And I think that's the last questions. Pa pa uling hirit na rito kay Maji. Pala question po, Miss Mel, Kap Joey, ask ko lang po, sa caregiver program, pwede po maging experience and teaching for five years as a caregiver? Depende sa klase. Always um, take a look kung ano yung caregiver. Dalawang klase ang caregiver. Isang elderly, isa sa mga bata. Kung halimbawa, ang teaching, eh, ang teaching na ginagawa mo is for professional or yung mga college level, then hindi siya pasok into caregiver pathway. Pero kung halimbawa, ang aalagaan mo, ang job offer mo is bata, or yung mga mag-child care ka at ang experience mo is kindergarten, then kahit pa paano, ginagawa mo yung trabaho. Pero depende kasi yan kung ano rin yung nandoon sa iyong certificate of employment. Just to make sure lang, always check kung ano ang responsibility nung posisyon na ina-applyan mo. And from there, tignan mo kung yun ba ay ginagawa mo doon sa current mong trabaho. If ang sagot is yes, then pasok yung iyong qualification. Eh, Ms. Mel, that's our last question. Ms. Mel, maraming salamat for answering and helping us, Ms. Mel, to understand more and to achieve our Canadian dreams. Makapunta dito. Sabi ko nga, kita-kits tayo dito sa Canada. And of course, mga ka, before we end our live streaming, napakabilis ng oras. I just want to invite everyone to join us this coming Thursday po, mga ka, July to 10 p.m. So walang rason na hindi kayo naka... naka Join dahil masyadong maaga. So ito, 10 p.m. na ng gabi sa Pilipinas. So join us mga kap. Uh, if you're here in Canada, it will be 11 a.m. Halifax. So join us our third cup or pangatlong tasa natin sa ating kapihan sa so when in Halifax, I see si Nico. Nico's journey, nurse from Qatar to Canada. At pag-uusapan natin ang Nova Scotia Provincial Nominee. And of course, uh, pag-uusapan din natin how to be a nurse here in Halifax or Nova Scotia. Ayan, if you're a registered nurse and you want to join, you want to ask questions directly to Nico, please join our webinar. The link will be on our Facebook page. Just click the link. Mga kap, if you're watching on our YouTube channel, please click the subscribe button and help me to grow our channel by sharing our channel and subscribe to our channel. Help me to grow by the end of July to makareach naman tayo ng 10,000 mga kap. So tulungan nyo, tayo, tulungan nyo kami maka-reach ng 10,000 subscribers. Ayan mga ka. So and of course, Miss Mel, uh, before we end, any last uh, message for everyone, Miss Mel? Thank you po sa lahat ng suporta nyo po sa aming mga webinar at sa aming mga live ni Joey. So meron po kami. See you again on Friday. Yes! So, yan, kita-kits tayo sa Friday, mga kap. Meron po tayong Q&A question every Friday dito sa Halifax. And if you're in Manila, it will be Saturday, 11 a.m. Sa mga kap na nanonood palagi, alam na nila yan. Tambayan nila every Saturday, mga kap. So, mga kap, please join us every Saturday. Don't forget to bring your question kasi tanong mo, sagot namin. Mga kap, before I end this live streaming, uh, gusto ko rin po kayo inbitahan to join me and follow me on my new platform it's when uh, it's Joey Moreno so just search on facebook it's a facebook page Joey Moreno i'm going to share uh, how i'm going to share on how to start your social media agency so if you're thinking to start your business or maybe you want to help your family in the Philippines to start their own business i'm going to share my expert is also on social media So mga kap, follow me on my platform. It's Joey Moreno. It's on YouTube and on Facebook. Kakasisi mula lamang. So kailangan ko din ng inyong suporta. Follow me. Share my, my page. It's Joey Moreno. So I'm going to share my expertise also on how to start your social media agency like gaya ng ginagawa ko po ngayon dito sa Halifax. So maybe lahat nagtatanong, bakit kap hindi ka nag-practice ng iyong nursing? Bakit hindi ka nag-RN dyan sa Canada? Napakaganda ng opportunity. So mga kap, I'm going to tell that story on my new platform. It's Joey Moreno. Ayan, Miss Mel, maraming maraming salamat for joining us. And of course, mga kap, see you here in Canada. 
Bye mga kap!